Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure to be on. The apocalypse. This is a term that's used in, in all sorts of movies and in popular media. People love thinking about the end of the world, the end of time, what will come. And we know that, you know, in, in world religions as well, there's a lot of reference to that in Christianity, um, in Islam, in Judaism, um, in many other religions. So, Dr. Shabir, I thought it would be interesting to compare the Christian and Muslim view of the apocalypse. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the Christian view is. Yeah, the Christian view largely uh, is based on uh, what is referred to as the book of Revelation, the last uh, book of the Bible. And uh, it's called Revelation because uh, it begins with the writer, uh, presumably John, saying um, that this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, so um, it's a message, uh, almost like Muslims understand that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gets a revelation from God. He gets a message from mm -hmm. God and tells us about things that will happen in the future. So this is the book of Revelation. This book is also called Apocalypse. Uh, and um, it, apocalypse does not necessarily mean uh, destruction. It means also revelation. Uh, but I was surprised to see that when I, when I did some research into it. It could mean like an unveiling or exactly, revelation. Yes. Exactly. But because the book of Revelation uh, speaks so much about the destruction of the world eventually, uh, or rather the, you know, well, yes, the destruction of the world and the institution of a new earth, new, heaven, uh, new heavens and, and a new earth. Uh, so uh, then that the term apocalyptic tends to mean in our popular parlance uh, destruction mm -hmm. uh, or something is of apoc apocalyptic proportions, which means, uh, you know, gigantic pro proportions uh, because the wrath of God is poured out in massive uh, portions in, in the book of Revelation. So basically, the book of Revelation is a book of 22 chapters. It uh, starts out with this idea that it's a revelation from uh, Jesus to John the Apostle uh, or John the, the Presbyter, the Elder, and uh, then it has uh, letters to the various churches that Jesus presumably is sending out to the churches, uh, messages of warning to them because they have deviated from the right path, their sins are outlined one after another. And then comes uh, all of this doom and, and gloom that God is uh, going to pour out his uh, wrath on, on the world. And then eventually the institution of uh, new heavens and, and a new earth um, towards the end. So uh, some Christians see this as a nice closure to the Bible because the book of Genesis had this ideal world, uh, the Garden of Eden. And then the Bible is ending with the ideal world to come in the, in the future. Um, now, the, at one point, it uh, speaks of the uh, Christians being raptured up out from the world, uh, and then comes a uh, period of tribulation. Uh, so the Christians, good Christians, would not witness that period of uh, tribulation. And uh, it also speaks about Jesus coming back. And uh, uh, there are two views regarding this, um, uh, whether Jesus would come back prior to uh, the, a period of, of peace, which would last for a thousand years, or Jesus would return after the period of peace, which would last for the thousand years. Uh, in the latter case, it means that Christians would have this uh, responsibility uh, to work towards and to est establish this period of peace for a thousand years. So two different views can have different implications for uh, Christian living. On, mm -hmm. on the first view that Jesus will come back and he will inaugurate the period of peace. That could mean, a, a, or it could lead to a pessimistic sort of assessment of the world, thinking that the world is so corrupt, nothing can fix it except the coming back of, of Jesus. Uh, so, so there are different ways of interpreting the book of Revelation. And of course, because some of the imagery is, is so, uh, in Christian terms, some Christians say so bizarre, that they prefer to uh, interpret it in a metaphorical sense. Hmm, they say yeah. it cannot be taken literally. It, it could not mean that. Um, now, so Dr. Shabir, how important is the, is the concept of apocalypse to Christian thought then? Well, because it's part of the Bible, it's, um, it, it has its importance. And, and it's not only because of the book of Revelation alone, because uh, the book of Revelation actually ha so, so happens to be the last book that was approved uh, to be part of the Christian canon mm -hmm. of New Testament writings, uh, the Syriac churches uh, accepted it only in the fifth century, which means hundreds of years after Jesus and home be peace. Uh, but there are other passages as well, which have a, an apocalyptic uh, tone to it. So there are preachings of Jesus in the gospels. 
uh, speaking about times of tribulations and, and so on. Um, in the Synoptic Gospels in particular, Matthew, Mark, and uh, Luke, Mark chapter 13 especially, and corresponding passages in the other two Synoptic Gospels. Uh, so with, uh, with that in mind, uh, the, uh, the apocalyptic scenarios, which uh, are already in the Gospels, just play out to a greater extent in the book of Revelation. So even if some Christians uh, prefer not to read the book of Revelation, uh, in fact, uh, on my way to the, to the recording, uh, I, I was uh, listening to um, a uh, Christian uh, speaking about the book of Revelation and telling us in a nutshell what the contents are, and he said that some Christians are afraid to read the book of uh, <laughs> Revelation. So in, in any case, whatever the, the response to the book of Revelation, uh, the uh, preachings of Jesus already has this kind of apocalyptic overtone in the Gospels. And so that, that is very much a part of Christian thinking about what will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. What about Islam, Dr. Shabir? How does, how does the, Islam has its own uh, apocalyptic story. How does that compare to Christianity? Yeah, so in, uh, in the Islamic tradition, uh, we, we have some uh, descriptions of end times, and uh, many of these descriptions are very similar to what we know about from uh, the, the Christian and uh, other apocalyptic writings. Uh, partly because the Muslims uh, borrowed um, uh, themes and, and uh, uh, topics and so on from other um, communities, and some of these were attributed back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, so we have in Islamic tradition the mention of the Dajjal, the Antichrist, who is also mentioned in the book of Revelation, uh, but there are more elaborate descriptions in Islamic tradition that the Dajjal will be, um, uh, it seems like a human being, uh, but descriptions vary. But in any case, uh, he's said to have uh, been blinded in the right eye, and uh, he will have uh, the word uh, the, the, the word kufr, which means disbelief, spelt with three letters of the Arabic alphabet, kaf, fa, and ra. Uh, and uh, this will be written on his forehead, and Muslims would recognize it immediately to know that this is really the Antichrist. He's called in Arabic, Al-Masih al-Dajjal, hmm. uh, the, um, the, the false Christ, um, um, using the same term Al-Masih, which means the Christ or the Messiah, but the, no, with the ap appendage that he's the false one. Uh, it, it is known from Islamic tradition that uh, Jesus on whom be peace will descend at a certain time after the Antichrist has already been wreaking havoc on earth. Uh, uh, me, most so in the Islamic tradition, not that he's destroying things so much, but that he's turning believers astray by getting believers to worship him as opposed to worshiping God. Uh, but uh, then Jesus will descend on the wings of two angels uh, on a mosque in, the, in Damascus, and, uh, or yes, in, in Damascus, and he will uh, then go out and find the Antichrist uh, at a place near um, what is Tel Aviv today, at a place called Lud, and, and he will um, thrust a spear into this Antichrist's body, uh, who uh, the, in the meantime had begun to melt uh, just by seeing Jesus, and the spear would be the final undoing of him. Uh, then Jesus will uh, uh, usher in a period of peace, which is said in Islamic tradition to be, to be lasting for seven years, uh, after which eventually there will be other signs and tribulations, uh, so that if we think about the equivalent of the Christian rapture, it is mentioned in Islamic tradition that there will be a breeze coming through the land that will take up the souls of the uh, believers. Uh, so that the worst that is to come will be experienced uh, by those who remain after the believers, uh, believers are taken away. I should add that uh, these uh, detailed scenarios of the end times uh, are not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran has some brief mentions about things being destroyed, uh, the earth and this whole system mm -hmm. being destroyed, and, uh, and God, you know, having his own... Um, um, judgment of, of people. The Quran speaks about the Day of Judgment very exactly. prominently, right? Yeah, yes. that, that is repeated in the Quran. It's one of the main articles of faith of the Muslim uh, doctrine, uh, that we believe in God and we believe in the last day. Yeah, meaning, and that everything will be destroyed and then the Day of Judgment will come. Will, yes. And, and human beings will be kind of accountable for their 
for their sins, yes. right? And then there will be some sort of, you know, heaven or hell, or paradise or hell or whatever there is at the end, right? Yes, yes. In, in, the, in the Bible, in the New Testament in particular, the judgment is assigned to Jesus. Okay. In the Acts of the Apostles, uh, Paul declares that, uh, um, you know, God has appointed one man to, to judge the world. And uh, in the Quran, the judgment is um, to God alone. God is the supreme judge and he will judge us on the day of judgment. That's why we say Maliki Yawmiddin. <laughs> He's the owner of the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time, Dr. Shibar. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at QuranSpeaks.com.